Hello everybody, today is October 28th and you have joined the Qumflow bi-weekly Modern Registry community meetings. Just as a reminder for everybody on the call that this meeting is being recorded and adheres to the CNCF Code of Conduct. You will find uh, these recordings in the Qflow community YouTube channel. So if in case that you are interested, I warmly invite you to check out. There is also a playlist available uh, that contains all the recordings. And uh, you will find as well some of the uh, recent recording where in previous meetings we had as well great demos from the UI. Uh, to get started today, we have as usual an agenda. Everybody is free to propose. I've shared the link in the chat or otherwise, thank you, Matthew, because there is now a bitly short link for this one as well in case that you need it. And uh, without further ado, so I think that one of the items that I just want to check, cross check with our liaison uh, agent here, Milos, uh, for the release and sync. I think I will give you the word in case that you have any specific item that you want to talk about, or otherwise we can go through. Uh, yeah, just I wanted to say one thing that uh, we'll need to practically provide uh, very soon some kind of estimate about uh, the things that are scheduled for Q4 1.10 release. Uh, we can just say, okay, this is going to be on time. This is maybe problematic. This is like red flag, depending on, on the status, or you can say it is like 60% completed or 30% and whether like developers think that there are any, any issues. So that, that's something very, very soon will, will be practically required to submit to a Kubeflow release team, like to see like whether everything is on schedule or if there are any, any problems. Yep, makes sense. I think that as well, we provided to the release team, sort of like our main team and the tracker for all the items that we are following through. Uh, so for instance, there is uh, the team that we've been discussing so far. I think as well, uh, just for the purpose of everybody, the release team and more specifically the Kubeflow manifest or platform working group have uh, defined uh, the list of the dependencies. Uh, that are going to be included for Kubeflow 1.10. I don't think that we, had, we have any specific dependency on any of those because we are not using like special features uh, in Kubeflow Modern Registry for from any of those projects. But I think it's something important to keep in mind. Uh, so what I did is that in the in our roadmap, so if I go to our tracker. In the bottom, I'm starting to put in links uh, to these uh, cross-referenced uh, uh, things. So in the previous uh, Kubeflow 1.9, we didn't have any specific uh, cross-check of uh, versions, but in case uh, these are something that uh, we will need to keep an eye on. Um, so I think we discuss our team about a discussion uh, that we need to provide to Milos periodically, maybe some of the updates about how these things are progressing and i think actually this is uh, the best place this meeting is the best place on how to provide the status update about this uh milos anything else that i might be that we might be missing no i think i think that's that's it all right thank you very much so unless there is uh, any other things on this topic, we can move on to UI uh, just directly. I saw Griffin, uh, again, welcome to join the Qflow by weekly meetings. I think that you've added some points here, so the floor is yours. Yeah, so uh, this kind of got brought up out of a recent PR for the BFF that Edder was working on, um, and I kind of hopped in to finish it up. Um, but I thought it, now that the UI kind of has a working POC, it's probably a good time to review our deployments for both model registry server and the UI BFF deployment. Uh, so really two main points where these are like already things that we need to figure out. And then the third is more broad. So the first point is that we are going to be using the service annotations. I linked the the service file. So 
Uh, right now, the BFF is going to look for the annotations key here and uh, hope that the user is using display name and description there so that we have that to display in the UI when you're like selecting different model registries. Um, so in this case, we're kind of asking permission to update this as like a required param when deploying a model registry server. Okay, so here, here the thing is that upstream, we don't have like an operator. Right. We can ensure for this. My suggestion would be that uh, this is uh, our manifest uh, that we decide as a working group. So I think it's totally fine if you wanted to directly uh, add some metadata here that provides the best practice about it. So, and uh, the easier way to do it will be to raise a PR and just propose these to be added. And I think that's super easy. Uh, yeah. Just have an isolated PR, so that will be awesome. My suggestion, however, is that uh, the code shouldn't rely on these elements being sort of like uh, available and otherwise crash. Sort of like have, I don't know, an NA or whatever else is best displayed. Uh, because these manifests are the one that we also sync from modern registry to the Kubeflow manifest uh, overall. And uh, however, the end users, the, consum the consumers of those uh, repo are actually free to make their own changes and we cannot sure. fully control. So that's why I'm saying is like, I think that adding things to this uh, manifest as you propose, I think is more than all right. And we can have a PR so that if anybody has some concern, uh, we can chime in but uh, also as well on your ui work uh ui code side i will sort of like try to be uh sort of like uh um let's say re resilient to this uh, information not being available sure yeah we we it works without passing but i think it might start relying on like ip addresses at that point um so it's just not as clean uh the, the the second point here is actually like pretty much a follow-up to this is right now when we're trying to find like if you have multiple model registries in your cluster we're looping through every service in the cluster um it'd be nice for us to get like a label also in there to like quickly sort through all of that um I imagine we could still do it on this service just somewhere in the metadata. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, from my understanding is that these uh, these exist because it was uh, thought to be like the the app name. So if you're looking for that one or you want to add an additional label, please feel free to do so. And also, we are not really obliged to have as app. I mean, as a value for app metadata. I mean, if, uh, for instance, like a modern registry or something like this will be more convenient, I think that as well, you are more than free to okay. uh, PR that suggested changes. Maybe here there could be a reasonable way to have as labels something like, uh, I don't know, uh, the thing that indeed you want to specify so that you can filter, as you said. I think, again, these are our manifest as a working group. So we sure. are free to propose for it. I think it's uh, more than all right. Great. OK, well, then for the third point is kind of like what you've already answered for the last two, which is throw up PRs as we need them and get approval. Um, but I just want to convert, since we don't have the operator here, I want to have like a maybe review at some point or like an agreed upon like user experience for trying to deploy this fully upstream with the UI. Um, so not necessarily a topic for today, but um, might be something I'll be working on with the team at some point is uh, continuing to update these things. So it, the user experience for deploying is uh, still good. Absolutely. Here, I think uh, if, uh, yeah, Ramesh, in the meantime, you want to go ahead? 
No, I wanted to ask Griffin uh, um, in terms of usability. Uh, yeah, I think you are going right there. Um, so in Qflow, we have one way. I mean, we have this, uh, you know, somebody uh, installed from manifest, right? You know, uh, were you thinking of something different? Uh, that's going to be my question. But, uh, no, no, no. Just that the, like, default deployment that we're recommending here is like a verified by multiple people on the team, not just like one UI <laughs> developer who is like, this works. Uh, so, yeah. I think uh, Griffin, the, the easier way would be that uh, for this one specifically, since it is also about the deployment topology, my recommendation here, instead of just going straight to a PR, Maybe you can describe in a quick GitHub issues the kind of like a deployment topology that you were thinking about. Sure. Because what I would expect is that, uh, say that we go here, we go to the manifest customize, say in base. I mean, I don't see any problem in having additional manifest here that in addition to the uh, our modern registry sort of like backends, also deploys the UI as a, a set of additional uh, manifest uh, just in this directory or in any other directory that we may see fit. The, okay. the suggestion would be to say, let's use a GitHub issue to discuss, uh, because I remember that you have two images, one for the uh, UI and one for the backend for the front end. Mm -hmm. My interest would be to say, let's uh, have uh, some agreement or some overview about what you have been thinking about the deployment topology, if it is one deployment with a two sidecar or uh, just directly a modification of any of these or uh, two separate deployments, whatever it is. And then we can add this manifest here because I think that maybe the, the easier solution that personally see is one proposal will be that as part of this base, we have as well the UI just deployed as well so that we don't have to have an additional step for installing just the UI component uh, for it. Yeah, That's yeah I agree. That I would sort of like uh, propose as a beginning for starting the conversation. But then again, here for this one, I would suggest to have a, a small uh, sort of like um, uh, GitHub issue recorded with the, what you intending to do. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, I can do that. Awesome. Anything else that you wanted to to share? With? No, uh, we can move on to editor. Thanks for uh, appealing the service request. Absolutely. No, thank you for you know contributing and sharing. I'm really happy to have you here. Yeah. Heather, I see that you've added some some items. So yeah, uh, it, 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 it is is not for one ten, but probably something that we can discuss for the next releases, and not something that we can do right now. But just that, if you can open the video, Matteo, please. That I did a small POC is on a POC link. The idea is small POC of adding our OIs for Jupyter. This is a good combination of the Python client API that we can use in a pure notebook, but we can also can explore modern registries with a Jupyter extension. So just to highlight that the way that we are doing the why, this doesn't make sense, the why that I'm listing there. I'm just showing that we can handle anything from, from our eyes in, in Jupyter as well. So this demo, basically, I interact on the notebook with the Python client API and see the results as a Jupyter extension. We can use this to explore models and in future to build our own custom wise over the, the on the top of BFF to explore model races, for instance, Jupyter. And for easy consumption, it's just something that um, I want to show here. That's a good combination for our existing Python Y that is the best for the code, but you can add also some visualizations if the community is interested in this in future. That's uh, yeah. I think that is uh, that is very awesome. Do you see this as evolving in like a plugin for Jupyter? Yes, yes. This this this, this will be a a, a plugin uh, uh, for Jupyter that we can decide, and now so we can do a plugin for the Visual Studio Code. I think for the Visual Studio Code is even more interesting 
because we can allow users to that as an app developer to quickly integrate the model rest in the copy and paste URLs and the copy and paste versions like a uh, model rest explorer inside of the suit code. It's just it is again, this is not for 110. We are full of a plate for this release, but you can definitely investigate and if the community is interested, this is something that you can start to to discuss. Absolutely. Uh, Ramesh? It is, this is, I'm a little confused on the usage of it, but uh, is there any, um, is there any like a predefined, uh, um, you know, some other uh, use cases, uh, not necessarily with the model registry, but uh, some other tools or some other precedents, you know, I'm trying to see um, that, you know, they have used this kind of a, you know, design in Jupyter yep. or in our visual code or somewhere, right? Yep. You know, similar that, you know, we can take inspiration. I mean, obviously this inspiration is already taken somewhat there, but at least we can get a more understanding of where, you know, the future development of some of these are going mm -hmm. uh, to get my head wrapped around to what you are proposing. Because, you know, looking at just uh, this one, you know, I, I, I'm, I I'll be honest, and I'm not completely following the um, the full benefit of it, or versus uh, um, are not 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 uh, right enough. Uh, yeah, full it's, use case of it, if it makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, and, and I, I I understand I, I, because this demo is is more to show the technology that is feasible right. and not about the use case. For Hamesh, imagine that you are developing a notebook. And you want to list uh, it, it, before you committing for any code that you go for the pipeline for the to, that you go for automation. You definitely should use the Python SDK to implement this. Anything that you go in the code and you be in your GitOps should use the Python SDK. But imagine if for the Jupyter first, if I am a data scientist and I do like to explore between the multiple model registries for my company. What are the models available and what are the, the, the versions available for that models? Instead of going with SDK and doing the calls and prints uh, to see everything, I will have a utilitary panel that will open the model registries for my company and mm -hmm. I can quick, quickly explore them. And as soon as I decide to, to consume one of them, you can do a, 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 a with the right way you can do a copy and paste that we will paste inside the notebook the right calls for the Python SDK for the model rest that are selected in the extension. Okay. You understand more, more or less? It's, it's more like I, I can do some more cups for the next meeting. It's more like a model rest to the explorer. Okay. So, for uh, users. so so when you when you explore when I select a model. Is it helping with my coding on the Python side? Is that what yes, it? yes, yes? Okay. Because we, we we can put a boot on, on the Y that are exploring the model registries, like transform this in a in a in a in a in a, in a cell in a notebook cell, okay. and as soon as user click it, we can fill up a cell oh. with the with the SDK code correctly for that model that I'm visualizing. Okay, so we could we could flip that into a Python code that could be exactly. Like GitOps uh, kind yeah. of thing. Uh, in, in, in the use case, imagine that we, when you are using the, mod, the, 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 the the Python SDK and we are not sure which, which models I have deployment with versions of that models. And usually people do a print with a for loop that is super lame. They can go in a Y and explore this. Right. This is for the Python. For the Visa Suit code, uh, Mateo, if you can, I, I, I'll put a link quickly on the chat again if you can open this 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 the, the link the link that i just shared and sorry to make you just one second sorry mm -hmm. yeah imagine that uh, on the left here we have the github actions explorer with our run imagine that i'm a, now i am a, a java developer or a golang developer wants to consume a model to run over my applications so I will have a plugin in the Visual Studio Code that will list, like I have GitHub Actions here, all my models that are registered. And as soon as I, I select one of those models, I can copy the snippet for my code that you actually do that call for that model with the recreations. 
that is but it's two different stories the first one is that on, on when i'm a data science on the jupiter i do like to query which model which model rest and models version i want to use and the second is more for application development that is how i envision those two extensions okay interesting yeah Make I, I make it clear. I can do some screenshots for for the next call with some some diagrams. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I think I, I follow you, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it would uh, probably help the greater community. Uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. it doesn't have to be next week, but yeah, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I do for next week. I'm just uh, for the next meeting. I'm just raising this uh, because this could be something interesting for us for the next release cycle. Mm -hmm. And we can also can start the conversation if the Kubeflow community wants to have one Jupyter extension for all projects. Right. You know, I'm I'm more thinking uh, more in the pipeline side. You know, I, I know we don't support the BFFs kind of a story there, but if at all we support, you know, similar things in the pipelines. Let's say. Yep. Somebody could drag and drop the you know pipeline uh, infra how the model is being trained in a experiment or something you know have it spit out a code <laughs> uh, yep. that that would be super cool right you know i mean back and forth uh, yeah and I'll, I'll make some diagrams and try to explain again sorry for this noisy <laughs> presentation of the video Ramesh, and others okay great thank you no, so I much think it, i you. think it's uh, actually it's very welcome the, the thing that also I see that it would bring a lot of value, especially when it comes to, to visas to the code like uh, IDEs, is that the, I don't remember correctly, I'm not sure if I remember correctly that Kubeflow Notebook supports them uh, too, sort of like to run it. So you would have actually in the same sort of like uh, uh, development environment, being it Jupyter, being it uh, the Visual Studio Code in the Kubeflow basically deployment scheme. You would have these uh, things for the code generator my only my only caveat there would be to say let's be uh, mindful as well that fact that uh, sometimes we do have to change our model registry python client uh, um client so let's say the shape of the api may change uh so yep. there is something as well to be mindful of so we need to find a way to be sure that those templated assets uh, snippets are but for definitely something very interesting to have because i think it will make it very easy for people to have uh, sort of like a ready-made uh, cell populated or python script populated for the pipelines something like that yep also thank you either as well for sharing all right moving on uh sorry either were there other items that you wanted to share no just this thank you all right no thank you uh i think that uh, we can move on to the csi we have had uh, some uh, progress in the recent uh, uh so a couple of prs so maybe i don't know if alessio you wanted to run us through uh some of the recent changes here yeah thank you Matteo. uh just want to update everyone on the new feature uh, added to csi uh now we support more than one model registry for uh, per cluster or namespace uh, given the the manifest for the cluster storage container we had the m bar for model registry based url and we just had the possibility to connect to that particular model registry now without introducing any breaking change uh, we have the usual prefix model registry to indicate the URI of the model registry. And uh, we added the possibility to also have the model registry URL as the first item on the URI so that we can connect to that model registry in particular. Uh, uh, I've also added end-to-end uh, -end tests for those four scenarios that you see in the PR. And uh, yeah, that's all. Thanks to Matteo and uh, Andrea for reviewing uh, the PR and uh, for the code suggestions. Yeah, Ramesh. 
Uh, one question is the is the URL full blown URL or the, is that the alias for the model registry? Full blown. Full blown. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just as a reminder, so I don't think that uh, we. Had, I mean, I think uh, that there should be like. Uh, I'm not sure if I remember where. But there was like uh, um, so when you define the consensual initializer, you will define the base URL by default. Uh, so this is where the environment variable that uh, uh, Alessio was speaking about. So this will be like uh, in the case of the cube flow or the registry, you will just rely on this one to be the, the one the default, so that you can reuse uh, exactly the um, the previous uh, sort of like a shortened version. Like since uh, if you can assume that there is one default model registry, you would have a model registry with a model name and the model version in case you wanted to need. Or these uh, options that have been added, it will be in the case where you have the multiple tenancy options so that you want to refer to a model registry, which is not the default one, uh, which happens to be the case for other distribution. Uh, finally, also as well, um, I think that I've discussed it with Alessio, there are a top i mean one suggestion that i had uh, was as well if i can find the to 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 if i can find the tracker what i've asked also uh, alessio is to add a simple tutorial on the kubeflow website for our documentation so mm -hmm. the kubeflow uh, website uh, for documentation we have an example of integrating with uh, kser I'll show where it is. The registry can start to deploy an inference. So currently today, we were not being able yet to show an example integration of uh, this uh, storage initializer, but uh, with the propriety work that Alessio has been doing, the next step could be that here we had an option to say, hey, now, since you have the register the model, you can also deploy an ISVC with that uh, model registry URL, so that will be sort of like a very easy uh, as well to have an inference service out of a model registered on the model registry. All right. So in, in Qflow model registry uh, is a model registry represented by its service name, right? Uh, yeah, that's the top, yeah. top, top most identifier. In modern in Kubeflow modern registry, we yeah, yeah. We, so it's like uh, if you wanted to refer to it as well explicitly, you will yeah. just repeat the service name, service DNS name, basically yeah. local one, and then but it, it's not needed for Kubeflow because since you can deploy the custom storage initializer pointing to that modern registry by default, this is what there is. So I, I was just so I was just thinking, you know, if there is a way we could just use the service name also. I mean, well, going back to the alias naming uh, instead of uh, instead of full, uh, because most of the time people might not know that. I'm thinking, but if we can just use model registry service as the then you know, or whatever the name of the <laughs> I'm sorry, not uh, not this one, but the service. If that's a possible I'm just thinking out loud. We go to the so I, the problem there, the problem to do what you're asking, Ramesh, mm -hmm. is that we will need to bind the dependency of the mother register operator here upstream. And we don't want to do that. No, no, not the operator. That's 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 why I was asking what it was the top level uh, resource we, we represent the model registry with service, right? So if you go to the service uh, uh, there. So in Kubeflow model registry, basically the people will use either of these two. And specifically oh. for the tutorial, I will prefer that they use this one. So there is model name and model version. That's the default one. It will go to yeah. the URL one. Yeah. So on the third one, instead of the URL, can we just have the, I mean, in addition to that, you know, can we have the service name? Oh, you are saying that that could be a that could be in a separate cluster altogether. 
It's My worry is that uh, the moderate, I mean, to get the, so to get, here is just my line of thought. I, I think that I'm, I'm getting what you're saying is like, if the modern registry has sort of like a short name or an alias, yeah, we would yeah. like to know the rest uh, uh, route without uh, sort of like having to specify that one in full. But right. to do so, that is done on top of the modern registry customer resource definition, which is part of the fun on the modern registry operator we don't have upstream. And so not to bind uh, some dependency here from the modern registry operator where that customer resource definition is actually defined, I think it's just easier to have the, the URL so that it can customize for the cases where you want to customize them. Because let's think about, uh, so let's separate a bit uh, the kind of like the distribution approaches with the upstream. In upstream, we're showing an example where there is a single model registry. So given that there is a single model registry, these are the ones that people will be using about. With my preference and advice, uh, that uh, the guidance will be to say, you can deploy an inference service with the model name and the model version. Pretty easy. Let's say once that the customer resource for the CSI has been defined, that's pretty easy to do. Why does one exist? It exists because some in distributions where there might be multiple tenancies set up for modern registries, as we may discuss, for instance, in OPH, what can happen is that you could define your custom storage initializer to be pointing to a specific modern registry in a given namespace, because that is not the cluster storage a container. It will be just the storage container pertaining to a specific namespace. So you may have by default that a, a given ODH project refers to a given model register. And that is the also the setup that I would encourage, which will fall again back into here. Because if in that namespace, you're always referring to that a specific model registry, then by default, that is the one that is done. The reason why this one exists is that because you may have a definition of the storage container, which is not the one that you want to refer to. You want to specifically refer to a modern registry that you know of. And since that you know of, this is why the modern registry URL is here. So that you can directly point to that one instead of having to have first a custom resource being defined for that uh, storage container. I hope that it shows case all the possible scenarios and why they default back uh, to the one that are more meaningful. Well, I, I Alessio, do you want it, uh, to add uh, anything or something that I might be also not considering when we discussed? Yeah, uh, I think uh, an user, yeah, it's more uh, difficult to, to get an URL for a data scientist uh, for the, the service uh, like we do, but uh, we, in doing that, we have the possibility, like Ramesh said, to don't bind to a service, but uh, to an external service or uh, something scope that you cannot access using the Kubernetes API like a service. So it's more uh, less user friendly, but gives us the possibility to have uh, support to more uh, scenarios. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, here is uh, the one I was thinking about a little bit more so let's say if i have a dev cluster right you know then uh, if i design these things and you know the dev cluster in in my GitOps or whatever i have designed if i you know if i use the exact specific cluster one you know i would put uh, like a model registry public uh, dash you know some dev cluster dot dot com uh, so then you know when i want to migrate it in i would have to explicitly go change this one if at all if i have it on an alias or something like the, i just need to make the manage the aliases uh, point you know if, or a label let's say you know if we are tie, tying to a label a, a unique label on a service or something you know or the service name itself you know maybe those are 
those won't change between the clusters then that would be that would be static and then it will still work everything uh, uh, because you know whatever the lookup mechanism we put it into the csi for that resolution of that alias right then it would point it will go find the right url for it and then put it up right so that's that's what my thinking is you know rather than putting the absolute if you put the absolute it's a little bit of it it works in a given cluster no problem but uh, uh, unless if you are trying to go to a different cluster you know you would need more work to fix it uh, the deployment scripts before you push it hopefully that yeah i think that's where alas was saying so, yeah yeah but also i would argue why i mean because the to me also one thing in the scenario that you describe ramesh is that uh, even in those cases the those are fine yeah the storage are... container yeah but the storage container even in the case that you have multiple model registry you have a, your development cluster i would argue that uh, that is a it, that is a matter of definition of the storage container in that namespace so i mean mm -hmm. switching to this one it's more for sort of like a, in the interactive i would say kind of like a deployment is not something that is declaratively done because if you want to be the decla fully declarative you would you, you would opt for yeah. these options and in the case of distributions if they have multiple tenancy they are the one in charge of also defining the correct storage container scoped in the namespace that will point it to the modern registry of red you were saying you just create another storage initializer with that yeah with a different base url then you don't need any of it that might be the that may be what you know what is that uh, would be the easiest solution yeah yeah or at least that's uh that's i, I would uh, try to sort of like steer people to always use this option right. and this one to be dedicated for those cases where from within a namespace, you must reference two different uh, model registries, basically. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, dokie. Um, Alessio, anything else uh, beyond for the fact that maybe the next step could be to add some tutorial in the website? Or do you think that uh, everything was covered? Yeah, thank you. Everything is covered, I, I think. Thank you, Alessio. Andrea, I saw that you are in the meeting, so see this in this is a carryover of your contributions. If you wanted to add any comments, uh, we are happy to hear. <laughs> thank you, Matteo. No, nothing in particular. Just want to thank you, Alessio, for taking over that uh, in let's say that feature improvement uh, on the CSI. I think that another uh, aspect that is worth to um, to evaluate or at least investigate is the issue that is already uh, tracked in these notes actually which is issue 338 uh, which is more like trying to improve how we are managing the csi itself in terms of dependencies and in terms of uh, uh, implementation uh, i think this is something that i think is worth to to investigate a bit more didn't have time to be honest but it's something that I will hopefully uh, have a chance either this week or the next one. Uh, but maybe that's something that we can also coordinate offline or discuss directly on the uh, on the GitHub issue itself. Because there are three, just to summarize for who didn't have uh, time to look at it. It's about trying to investigate three, three different approaches and see which one is actually uh, the best one in terms of uh, maintainability and uh, uh, trying to reduce the effort to maintain the CSI uh, itself. So hope to get some more news and feedback uh, in the next uh, in the next meeting. But I think that's more or less all from my side. Thank you very much again, Andrea, uh, for everything, and thank you, Alice. Yeah, thank you for the CSI work, uh, Andrea, Matteo, and Alessio. Good job. All right. Uh, we don't uh, have uh, uh, we don't have Leo and Chanakia, so I think that those 
those items uh, will need to be uh, tried to reorganize uh, in some ways. Uh, maybe uh, we'll see, we will see how to get that one around. I also saw that there was just a, some update uh, about some proposal being uh, worked from, uh, from uh, this uh, contributor. So we will see if we have any news about it. Uh, so that is about it. For the CVE tracking, uh, we have the periodically things uh, done. I think that I don't have any update from the Kubeflow uh, pipeline working group about the MySQL image support. Uh, so I will try to maybe bump those conversations because that is one of that uh, was giving us uh, a bit of uh, the higher uh, sort of like uh, count for CVEs. It's an image that I think that we shared from the uh, data science pipeline as well. Uh, so it's about this. Uh, so, all right, we will see how that will progress. Uh, then uh, we have just an information, uh, just uh, uh, for, for awareness, um, mainly just for you to know, with the version 029, I think that we closed the loop and we implemented all the changes in the release uh, process that we discussed in this working group uh, to, to have for. So we just now have uh, uh, a release branch that is also copied. Thank you, Alessio, as well, for taking the um, initiative of synchronizing the manifest uh, uh, to the Kubeflow manifest. So it doesn't change much from a consumption point of view. The version is 0.29 uh, alpha, uh, but it's just uh, we have some kind of like a minor updates in order to have this one a bit with a developer experience a bit more comfortable. And uh, yeah, so I think that we're doing so with keeping track on uh, our Kubeflow 1.10 roadmap items. I don't know if Arameshi wanted to follow up on any update for the Unity catalog. Uh, don't have any update yet, uh, Mitchell. Hopefully uh, in coming weeks, I can take you over to Okay, okay. And then, uh, I mean, one of the things that we that we discussed, and uh, while well, I have uh, also added everybody here, is that in one of the previous uh, meetings, uh, Josh had a kind of like a suggestion if we wanted to do a micro blog about the uh, Kubeflow model registry UI that is being developed. So I don't think that we need to transform this one into a full blog post. Uh, because uh, it will uh, require very much effort. And I think that uh, sort of like uh, everybody is a bit stretched thin nowadays. But in case that everybody wants to sort of like uh, uh, contribute uh, a microblogging post, I think that we have an opportunity to uh, create a blog post in the Kubeflow blog uh, about uh, the, the work that we are doing. So I'll just uh, put it, put this one out there in case that anybody is interested to have sort of like a concerted effort to write a microblog. Okay, yeah, I can definitely work on that with, with the guys. I don't know if you sh we should focus on 110 together and write what, what, everything that you got in 110, including the why or just the why. No, what my suggestion would be to say something like, uh, was more akin to something like, hey, in the recent uh, modern registry working group, uh, uh, there are some demos that are available for UI. There was the initial demo that uh, mm -hmm. I did with uh, Lucas, I think. And then there was the other demo about the, uh, the design token. Uh, so maybe just, uh, you know, very, a very micro blog just to point mm -hmm. to people uh, the content that otherwise might be difficult to dig out from the meeting recordings. So yeah, I, I can do that. Yeah, you can assign to me. Uh, and that will be awesome. All right. And uh, I think uh, that uh, these are all the items. If anybody has uh, any last minute uh, points that uh, they wanted to add, please feel free to raise your hand. Or otherwise, going once, going twice, happy to give you back 10 minutes uh, in your evening. Thank you all for your participation. And thank you, everybody that presented today on their updates and their progress. Uh, much appreciated.
I just remember to you that tomorrow there is the Kubeflow community meeting that runs every week. And with that, I will see you in two weeks for the next model registry bi weekly. Thank you all. See you. Thanks, Thanks Matteo. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.